Happy New Year, everybody. To kick off 2024, I'm doing something I've never done before. Exactly one year ago, I posted a video about my friend Dan and his wacky tiny home, which got over 100,000 views and tons of questions in the comments section. So if you missed that one, be sure to check it out first. I'll post a link to it in the video description below. Anyways, last week, Dan reached out to let me know that he was indeed still alive and currently weathering the storm in his tiny house in the middle of nowhere. Since the last time we've met with him, he finished working on the house and is about to start renting it out and go traveling to pursue his career as a nomadic poet and performance artist. At the end of the video, he even writes me a custom poem to usher in the new year and performs it aloud for us. My dad and I braved the blizzard to go meet him and film the first follow-up interview featured on this channel. And we wanted to see how his experimental home was performing in the middle of the winter and to get your questions from the comment section on YouTube answered. So I'm returning from a year-long hiatus to pick up where we left off, documenting the story of a resourceful and determined artist who used the unemployment relief checks he got from the government during the pandemic to build himself an off-grid shelter for $33,000. And while last year my video featured tracks off Dan's album Triad on Spotify, this time Dan surprised us with a few new songs, which he played for us live during the interview. I've included clips of his performance throughout the video, and if you want to hear the full version, I'll include that at the end, which is another first for the channel. It's a double first. We're kicking off 2024 the right way. And just like the last video, we've included chapters so that you can more easily navigate the video. Each chapter has a little description so you know exactly what you're gonna be watching. And lastly, if you're new here, we've got a lot more content like this, so if that's the kind of thing you're into, then consider subscribing. And be sure to click the bell to get notified when new videos are released. And you can support the channel directly by going to our shop at theoffgridguru.com, where we offer educational content about off-grid housing like the Earthship 101 guide and paper model kit. And as always, if you have questions, want to share your story, or just say hi, you can find me in the comments section below. Enjoy. and this is my race car factory. <laughs> Gotten a lot smarter lately. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Hi. You, baby. Hello, dude. How you doing? Good, dude. I did a little painting. Got a little artistic with it. You know, I got a got a green now. I put some hearts on it. It's, you know, really not much, but I painted, uh, we finished the stucco. Uh, so, so three coats of cement, plaster over the rebar and the lath that is the megaphone. And then I painted that white. So I kind of like, I liked it. I was like, I didn't expect to like it, but I liked it. And so I'm gonna leave it this way for a while and then maybe paint some more over it later. Um, but uh, for now, I think I'm gonna leave it like that. <laughs> this place is nice. It's it's done. House is done. <laughs> you, you've, you've done some trim. Yes. You painted your trim. You sealed your floor. Yep. You have your wood stove. You got running water. Yeah, technically. It's I, shaping up. I thank you. I like it a lot. It makes me very happy. Uh yeah, so good to complete something. One thing to have a project, but another thing to complete it. Uh especially the floor. Oh yeah. 
not having dirt floors is oh. a big upgrade. Huge upgrade. This and this year I, I actually waxed it and re-oiled it. I thought it would be fun if we went through the YouTube comments. I'll tell you anything you guys want to know. <laughs> and also, did you, you date Kim Kardashian? <laughs> Everybody's main question was the water system. So just break it all down. Where does it come from? Where does it go? <laughs> and your shower and your toilet. God cries sometimes. And those tears fall on my roof. So as you can see, water is falling from the sky. This is the source of my water, the sky. Thank you, God. Um, and uh, it falls on the roof. It hits the roof. And there is uh, a slope to the south and it is collected in the gutter and then in this case it's frozen so it has to melt the sun will come out the next day it'll melt it go down the downspout and into a 1200 gallon cistern that's buried seven feet in the ground right beneath my feet you can see right here that it's pretty much almost full i have no almost once for water ever and i'm thinking about expanding my water use because i have so much water i don't know what to do with it so Love that. And if it does overflow, it goes into the little overflow right there and out into the desert. <laughs> the overflow, can you explain how that works? Yeah, so if there's, uh, if it gets too much water, if it gets full, then um, there's a little spout and the water will just trickle out there and uh, it goes into a PVC pipe that it goes out to about here and it has a, a leach field, a drain field, so uh, gravel and uh, it's separate and then you put plastic on it and then dirt over it. But uh, yeah, then the, the water goes out into the um, thirsty sagebrush instead of clogging up the downspout and going like trying to go back up in there and then burst in this and all that. You don't want to know that. So. What about this? Uh... Oh, this is the black water, gray water from the sink. So I could use this water too, uh, if I wanted to water plants with it or something like that. But uh, as you can see, it's kind of hard to grow plants out here. So <laughs> what's in there though? I mean, what's underneath it? Oh, it's just water in a barrel. It's a 55 gallon barrel drum that we buried. Um, it's pretty smelly, but. Yeah, it's pretty nasty in there. Some sort of mite species flies or spiders or something is taking over. It's looking more and more like a toxic waste, toxic waste dump, but <clears throat> it's great because I don't have to do anything to it if I don't want to. It just overflows out here. Uh, same concept, gravel, leach field, PVC, that type of thing. And this guy? That's the batteries. So it's an insulated, buried box. Um, yeah, eight L16s. It's been enough. That's been really good. I'm glad with, uh, happy with the power. I even uh, ran my little electric heater uh, a little too long the other day and still had plenty of power and then recharged it today in the sun and everything's all, all good. At Life Streamer says, very cool. What about in-house running water and plumbing setup, shower and toilet? I wish if I had to change one thing, I wish I had built an indoor shower. You know, I, I realize I love water. I love taking showers. And so now my plan is to build a separate structure because it's not really room in this one for that. I'm going to do a, a bathhouse, pa totally passive solar uh, with a shed with that has space um, for me to store a motorcycle. So it's going to be the moto shower shed, she shed. But you have you have indoor running water somehow. Yeah, so I, I have a, I have a, I have a, a sink, um, and it's very basic. You know, we just ran the the uh, the the PEX pipe from the cistern to the sink, and then have a simple out black water out, uh, and a simple water pump that is connected straight to the batteries. So that, that's been really great, but I don't even have hot water or anything. Um, is it an AC or DC pump? It's a DC. It, yeah, DC, because yeah. it's connected right to the batteries. Yeah. There's no pressure tank. And initially, there wasn't, but then uh, I got the advice to add a small RV pressure tank. It's about this big. So the water will run for about 7 or 10 seconds before it recharges. Is it out. under the sink in the building? Yes, it's under the sink in the... Oh, the sink in the cabinet was a, was an all-in-one laundry utility sink that was two hundred fifty dollars. 
This is a shower stall, yeah. Right now it's just storage, but yeah, I've been taking showers in here. My little um, half hour shower stall. The half hour shower stall? Yeah, half hour shower. <laughs> and the shower in the summer is outside. Just some pallets and shit I whipped up uh, for, you know, having a shower stall. It's a, what well, is a, it's the Julka hot tap uh, propane shower sink that packs up into a tub. You could even take it camping with you and some propane and you could throw the filter into the stream and you'd have unlimited hot water if you went camping too. So you have a big bucket of water that you fill up. Yeah, like for, a water tote that you fill up. Yeah, and the utility sink indoors, I fill up uh, a seven gallon jug and then I haul that 20 or 30 feet to the shower stall. Then you put the that propane put, put, camping shower nozzle into that. Yes. It pumps water from the seven gallon yes. and gives you warm water. Yes, and the water pump for that is plugged into uh, my solar system. And that's why you have one outlet on the outside of the building. Yes. All right. My plans for next next year are to build a shower house, like a bathhouse slash shed. I think that'd be a nice thing that I miss. Somewhere in this area, I want to build a shed, a uh, shower, indoor shower. That's just a compost hole. And I was gonna, this is a guest house. I was gonna do a 15 foot Lancet Arch dome right there and that this whole subterranean two feet. And that's what this is dug up to be. But I think I, for now, I'm just gonna use that dirt for building like a shower shed type thing. Living's easy and living's good. As long as you avoid Hollywood. Or I guess YouTube, even that. The toilet is a composting toilet and that's outside. Yeah, it's a bucket system. I have to haul it every once in a while to a hole and then I cover it. Being a minimalist is good. I like it. It makes me happy. Less stuff I own, the better. It makes me more happy I am. But yeah, it's an outhouse. Uh, well, this keeps the snow off a little bit. But, you know. uh, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's where I like to freeze my ass off. And um, I think I've shit it faster now. I've learned how to shit faster, which is good. Um, you know, efficiency, you know, that's my number one. No, so. Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I might do like a little tiny hot water here to have hot water in the sink indoors. Um, but those, those are the main things, you know, I really love water. I miss water when it's not warm enough to, to use my outdoor shower. It does, it is kind of a bummer. You know, I have to shower at the gym or wherever. And so, you know, that's, there's, you know, those things to think about. I and Don't skip on the indoor shower. <laughs> Just for all of you who were super concerned about the system. So at Mr. Make It 4037 says, I always wondered in these leak water in the structure over time. Okay, I always wondered in these, <laughs> does it leak water in the structure over time? Especially if you dig below grade. If so, how can you deal with that? No. No, you need, but you need a vapor barrier. That's what keeps moisture out. Uh, if you don't, there's points of weakness in their individual earth bags. There's seams, you know, in between each earth bag, it's a point of weakness. So you need, you definitely need to vapor barrier that, especially if you're going below grade. This house is three feet below grade. And instead of doing the plastic, which is what I originally did some uh, eight mil black plastic, but we, I realized actually I want to insulate below grade two, two feet. So we dug the house back out two feet. And then uh, for a ba vapor barrier, I did spray foam. That's one of the reasons I did spray foam as it's a vapor barrier. And so, you know, if you're not going to do spray foam and, and, and it was expensive, there's definitely drawbacks. It's not good for the environment. It's expensive. But one of the benefits also was it sealed the house very well uh, from everything, water, air, everything. So uh, I think that's why I chose it, because this house is shape is pretty funky. Everything's round and there's odd corners and it would be very difficult to do the straight um, foam board insulation. So uh, there'd be lots of gaps and it just wouldn't 
be very good. So I, that's a big reason I, I did the spray foam, and it cost four grand. So no leaks yet. Fingers crossed. No leaks yet, and um, I'm pretty confident now after this amount of time. Uh, you know, the the roof would be the first thing to leak, and that's going to last, it, they say, like 40 years. What about the front door? Water coming down the steps? So I had a, a big, big snowstorm the other day, like more than a foot of snow, and the snow, you know, blew in, um, and, and it did melt a bit, and it created a little puddle. Uh, but I just threw like a little towel over it and then sopped it up and that was it. But in the rain, never. Um, and that's because the prevailing wind comes from the other direction. So it, the, the rain is almost always blowing that way. If we do get that weird eastward bound monsoon crazy storm, um, you know, maybe one day it might get a little wet in here. Was it, was it intentional putting the, the door opening against the, the wind? Or Yes. Also with feng shui, they say in feng shui, you want to have your opening to their door to the east for uh, metaphysical reasons, but I'm not sure why, but no. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand feng shui completely, but I know that they probably know more than I do. And it makes sense. So. Okay. So actually I just want to give the shout out because another person that asked about the uh, water was at underground treasure who said two minutes in this video and I see a major problem. <laughs> That is, he's got multiple steps going down below ground level, and then he's got an arrow and a cowboy hat guy emoji. <laughs> Water finds its own level, and you may not have this problem today, but in the future you might. And then he's got a, a wave, and then an arrow pointing to the wave, and then a winky face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just quickly explain to you guys that it, uh, it averages 11 inches of precipitation in this area. So there's really just not a lot of rain to begin with out here. And the, when it does rain, it's often very windy. And 99% of the time so far, uh, it's not blown in directly from the east because there's these giant mountains over there. And that's just the way the weather works here. And so I took all of that into account and decided I could get away with it. Also, you, I built a uh, one layer of earth bag at grade level as a lip to keep any running moisture from the outside coming in. You're uh, saying that if there were yeah, any so, surface runoff, which yeah. is typically what happens out here where the water runs yeah. along the surface because it's such a clay, yes. he's got a lip before you step down into those steps that, you know, is a couple inches high that would ideally prevent any of that runoff water. And, and, and the stairs will get wet a little bit, but it, it ne never uh, uh, has it rained and collected water. In the steps, in, this, in the house, in, it hasn't flooded. Yeah, no. But that's not to say one day it, it won't, it might. Maybe this guy will be right one day. Who knows? You might be right. <laughs> uh, underground Commando, or whatever his name was. <laughs> <laughs> Underpants Commando. Thank you. Under At Natalie Gist 2014 said, I was thinking of using pallet strapping to hold my house together instead of barbed wire. But could I ask where you purchased your bags? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I bought my bags from uh, New Mexico Dirt Bags. I don't know if they're still in business, but the bags were made originally in Indonesia, and he got them from another company and then raised the price and sold them to me retail in person So in New Mexico, in Albuquerque. So <clears throat> I, I would just do your best internet scouring and try to find the best source of the, the plastic bags. But, uh, yeah, that's my advice for Super Adobe. Yeah, there were a lot of people who asked uh, where the bags came from. Here we have Dennis Oswalt, 8302, said, Hello, I'm Dennis. I've been contracting for most of my life and have built all over the country. One of the first parts of your story had to do with a disappearing tent. That in mind, can you talk about how you attach the roof? As it appears, your home is a launch pad for a big kite. I would hate to see folks one night seeing stars instead of a ceiling. <laughs> the wind gods can be wicked. Yeah. Now, your reply was, 
Yes, crazy 100 mile per hour winds here in New Mexico. Roof is traditional shed style, low slope, two big beams, rafters, then OSB with clips, then felt, pro panel and metal, should last a lifetime. But I think he's talking about how is the roof attached to the structure to prevent it from lifting off the eaves, oh. from the eaves catching the wind and, and tearing it off the structure. Is there, a, is there a top plate? Did you strap the roof to the bags. Oh yeah, yeah. The way that works is you use these plastic straps and buckles is what we did. The other option, and, and then you, you know, the so two courses below your final course, you throw the straps down, then you lay two more courses over it, and then you, um, we did uh, eight inch wide lumber on the top to have a piece, uh, you know, a, a solid piece of wood over the top course. And then we uh, use the plastic straps and buckles to cinch the top two courses of earth, uh, in this case, hyperadobe, to the wood. So your plating is yeah, strapped plate. to the hyperadobe, yes. and the roof is screwed to the plating. Yes. And, and, and that it gets plastered over. Those straps and buckles get, just get plastered over. The other option, which is what people are we're doing now, is stabilizing the final two courses of hyperadobe with uh 10% cement. It's more work to um do that cuz you have to mix the hyperadobe with the cement and then you can bucket it up and then lay it in the course. Um but what that does is it allows you to just str- screw the wood directly into the adobe and it and it's it'll stay there forever and you don't need the straps. But e- either way uh, it's you could do it either way. Yeah. Good, good question, Dennis. Yes. I hope that satisfied your curiosity. Thank you, Dennis! <laughs> Woo! At Pagan Wizard was saying, is it possible to good buy man. land with a hyper adobe home already built? Yes, mine's for sale for one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you actually... <laughs> you Did literally commented, I'll sell you this one for a million. <laughs> At BindyBerry6280, just wonder if spraying mud into the mesh nylon hoop with a small two-stroke engine will improve the building process. What? <laughs> what kind of, wait, wait, wait. What kind of riggedy, wondering. jankety thing are you trying to cook up there? <laughs> Y'all, let's drop a lawnmower engine on our bicycle, see how fast it goes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what, you, what, what we mean here. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. Okay. Um... Zarel the Creator 7098 says, There's an important part of this process that was not mentioned and will lead people into trouble. The plans you make have to be signed off by an engineer and the county has to approve the build. Or you're already laughing. Approve the build or will do all that work for nothing when they find out you didn't get any permits. The video was great until noticing that part left out, and now it's seriously misleading people into believing this is much easier than it is. Most places do not have zoning for this type of building yet, so an engineered signing of the plans are going to be necessary. Do not leave that part out. <laughs> but yeah. we didn't leave it out. It wasn't required. Yeah, this is a special area where permits uh, are not required. And, um, you know, also I have a religious exemption. No zoning. <laughs> Permits not required here. Uh, at Corbett's 00 said, are the bags you use 12 inches wide and did you use barbed wire between the courses? Yes. Just one layer of barbed wire. Callot is like, oh, you should use two co- things of barbed wire, two runs of it. But um, I just did, we just did one. And that becomes better. Like, if you're trying to build something like a Lancet Arch, like going like that, you, know, you could definitely serve you to use two courses of the barbed wire in between your bags. But if you're just building a wall straight up, just, just use one run of barbed wire. Four right. points, 12 gauge. Four point, 12 gauge. <laughs> At Ava dash L I two P E. How would in, you say that? In, in 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 my language, that means beautiful big lips. <laughs> okay, so both Ava and Ruth Valero six five eight said Uh-oh. hello. This is fantastic. Can I get the link for the course? And Ava said, "What happened to the course?" Yeah, well, nobody bought it. You suckers. Uh, so no, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna relaunch it. 
on my website, dansagepoetry.com, new website. And instead of paying them a bunch of money to host it every month, I'm just going to figure out how to host it myself, even if I have to put it on YouTube and private, and then I'll sell it to you through my website. But uh, Red and White Feathered Serpent 1156 said, add sticky rice to the adobe. That's the secret to concretion like the mortar and sticky rice used in the Great Wall of China, and it is still standing. Wow. The Asians think of everything. Okay, at Cult Commando asked, how much was the land? Uh, I traded uh, a nice Canon camera uh, that was worth about four or five hundred. The original purchase price was twenty five hundred. And then uh, but I paid four hundred of that uh, with a camera. And so I paid twenty one hundred in cash. So the land was twenty six hundred. It was twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. And you and that's traded three, a camera and cash for yeah, it. Yeah, and that and that's and that's three quarters of an acre. That's still good for for what you're getting. Yeah, and, and the price actually um, has only gone up a bit since then. Uh, so that's uh, about eight hundred a quarter, but now it's about a little over a thousand a quarter here in 2024. At Red and April Off Grid said a black roof is an interesting decision in the desert. How much did the house cost? Yeah, well, the reason I chose black is because we're in the high desert and it's actually cold here. And that's mostly what I'm worried about is being warmer. So, and I'm glad I did that. Also, black isn't technically the most thermal uh, accumulating color, is what the roofing told me. People told me anyway, they said it was dark green. That seems like it would be black. Yeah, that doesn't sound. Um, Uh, How much did it cost? Yeah, how much did it cost? Okay, so. There's two numbers. One, if I paid myself for all the work I did, and one, if I didn't. You know, uh, like I said in the other video, if I, if I didn't pay myself, then it's about 33000 Yeah, but then it's like, well, you know, how much work did I put in? And I would say, let's say I worked two years for full straight years. Let's say another 50000 for for those two years of salary. Um, you got to pay yourself uh, or, value, or value that time. But I was an unskilled carpenter. But uh, toward the end, more skilled. You know, and I and I was working for other people some for twenty five, thirty an hour at some points doing construction. So maybe like ten hours, ten dollars an hour to start, at twenty five at the end. Um, and and so yeah, that'd be about eighty six thousand or so if you if you call it thirty six on the original or eighty three thousand, call it thirty three. All right, at Melissa Andrek seventy eighty one says, what about power and water source? And we've covered that. Yeah. The power system, solar, with the inverter panel behind the TV. Yeah. How much did your solar system cost? Uh, that was the biggest expense, you know, definitely. Um, Ten. The so the panels were actually used, and I got them pretty cheap. I think I paid like a hundred dollars for my panels, and then the inverter, charge controller, all that is like brand new Schneider, same as the Earthships that they use. And I paid a guy 25 an hour to install the solar. So, you know, it's, and then the batteries were the most expensive part. I think those were like three, three or four grand. What kind of batteries? It's the L16s, and I got eight of them. Then I buried, so I had to do the, the bat, build the battery box, bury that. So there's backhoe work for that. And it's going to be about six years before it evens out with the solar system before it pays for itself in rel- relation to a normal power bill out here. So but if I had to take a guess, you know, maybe like uh, eight grand. I was going to say 10, but yeah. you saved because you got your panels cheap. Panels were really cheap. You have a stove for heating and where do you get your wood? The answer to her question, hold on, this is Melissa. I gotta put some more wood in the stove. Yeah, I was gonna say, the answer to your question, Melissa, is that his stove is insanely tiny. It's the smallest wood burning stove that I've ever seen. And so he can literally burn any scraps, and it probably costs him nothing to just get. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the forest is right there. I can hike into the forest. You could burn sage, but it clogs everything up, you know. I also was wondering, you've got a, a heater on the wall. So it looks like you've got a couple sources of heat. You've got a propane heater, yes. you've got an electric heater, and you have a wood fire heater. Heat comes from many places, my friend. And number one is the sun. If you can use the sun, it's free. So 
I incorporated some passive solar. If the sun's out, the house is warm, period. There's just, you don't need heat. Now, we're in the high desert and it's nice to have some heat when the sun's not out. So, <clears throat> uh, and also when the sun is out, I, in addition to the passive solar, I can even boost that by using my, uh, you know, solar system to power this Envy efficient heater. It draws about 500 watts. And it's nice to have it right by the couch. You just kind of cuddle up with it. And it's like, oh, that's a heat source. Yeah, now you have a couch. Yeah, yeah, couches are good. I love couches. <laughs> and um, so the, this is a 500 watt electric heater and you can run it without draining your battery yes. system? Yes, if the sun's out. If the sun's out, I can do you that. You mean if it was a sunny day? Yeah. In the evening? In the evening, I do not, uh, I try to minimize your load. Okay, so on a cold, sunny day, on a cold sunny day, this is amazing. Okay. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I also, when I'm really late, so I have a wood stove. And so that's what I mostly rely on is the wood stove when it's not sunny. And then if I, but if I'm lazy, which is sometimes, okay, mo most of the time, no, I'm just, no it's just sometimes I'll run a propane heater. And in that case, I'll open the windows a bit more and run the it's called the super buddy heater and when you run that thing on high it gets hot in here so fast yeah so in the middle of winter it can be nice to fire that thing up first thing in the morning and just bounce the temperature up five or ten degrees and then the sun comes out and you're coasting then the sun goes down you light the wood stove and you're and you're you're good well, that was uh, those were the questions, and now you know. Keep them coming. Yep. Have you been using the meditation dome? Yeah, not as much as I should be, but yeah, <laughs> it's a good incentive. It's um, really helped me incentivize my practice. Like, I'm like, oh, I built a meditation dome. I should use it, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. I, my dad came to visit, and I gave him my bedroom to sleep in. And I slept in there as kind of like a guest bedroom, and that worked out really well. Yeah, nice little chill chill area. You know, it is technically a kiva, uh, which is a small underground space used for religious purposes in the Ta Taos Pueblo tradition. So, um, yeah, actually, we've had some ceremonies in there, too. So it's kind of like a spiritual, you know, meditative it has a lot of uses actually now that um, it's growing on me. So you got some new plans on the horizon. You want to talk about your new plan? Yes. So while I was building this house, I had a lot of different volunteers come. One of them gave me a magic typewriter one day that changed my life. Ever since then, I have been writing poems, custom poems for people on the street and making really good money at it. I realized that I want to travel the world and do this. Now that I have a base to call home, I feel more free so that I can go explore. So my plan right now is to fly to Bali, Indonesia, give that place a try. My plan B is San Diego, California. I want to write as many poems as possible. I love writing. I've really fallen in love with it. New Mexico is possible to do that here in the summertime, but in the wintertime, my little digits freeze. And so it's really not a good place for being a year round outdoor poet. But my plan is to come back in October of 2024, build some more. Like I said, the shower in the shed. So you're taking a break. Yeah, uh, I'm taking a break. The other factor is I was in a rafting accident a year and a half ago where the current of the Rio Grande River uh, dragged my knees on some rocks. And so I've been struggling with rehabbing my knees uh, and I'm not able to physically do the building work anymore. It's kind of forced me into more of a sit down work situation. And it's, good, it's been a good thing for me, honestly. Slow me down, make me think and write and meditate. So if people want to follow your adventure? Yes, the YouTube channel is at Dan Sage Poetry. You can also just search Dan Sage in YouTube and it comes up.
morning. And I got my first few videos up already where I talk about being a street poet and building and a lot of different things. So go follow me on there. Please subscribe, Dan Sage Poetry. You wanna play us a song? Yeah, I'll play you guys a song. Oh, but first I have a piece. So now that we've got all those technical questions out of the way, it's time to have some fun. First, Dan's gonna improvise, writing me a poem based on my New Year's goals and then performing it for us. And after that, he's gonna serenade us with the new songs that you've been hearing bits and pieces of throughout this video. So grab your popcorn and let's get artsy. So tell me, sir, what would you like a poem about today? Well, Dan, it is the new year after all, and I'm thinking about my goals, being productive, really expressing myself, trying to give more to the world this year. Good one. Uh, anything else in this poem? Anything deeper beneath the surface? Yeah, I think it has to do with uh, feeling the way that I wanna feel rather than achieving something specific. Got it. All right, just give me a few minutes and I will whip up this poem. At that time, I'll perform it. Then you pay whatever you like. Here we go. I like it. Yeah, that was it. Anyway, that was it. It just ended. ended. It was yeah. like... <laughs> Under the surface, soul surfed wave. Ecstatic made New Year pragmatic into open window of service to world. The story unfurls as the whisper inside begins to shout, What is this for? What is this life about? Giving more, expressing the different colors true. The deepest blending of magic is found within me, within you. Some of parts more that is productive or perceived. <laughs> DanSagePoetry.com DanSagePoetryYouTube.com <laughs> Whatever, whatever. 50, 50, 50. <laughs> Love you, bro. Gift for you. Thank you, bro. This is going in the new studio. Yes! <laughs> Hello! Hello, Cleveland! Are you ready to rock? <sighs> yeah, we're ready to rock. Yeah! Alright, here we go. Uh, here's a song about uh, being off grid in this house and uh, everything. So, here we go. <laughs>
music uh, is on all the streaming under Daniel Sage instead of Dan Sage, but dansagepoetry.com, everybody. Dan Sage Poetry is my YouTube as well. And um, why not uh, one more? Oh, yeah, I got one more. <laughs> <laughs> Give others visions of new reality yet to be released into worlds. Bloom with the seed. Sprout noble wreaths adorning doorways to our nexus soul. The old, new 